Hi, I'm Tom Metzger, your host for Race and Reason. Race and Reason, dedicated to real free speech, that small island of free speech in a sea of controlled and managed news. And we've got a show for you about what, Tom? Well, let me, let me introduce Mr. Boyd Rice on my right, who is somewhat of a cult figure in the uh, racial underground musical world. And Mr. Rice is also into quite a few other different things, which we'll be trying to cover in the next half hour. Mr. Rice, welcome to the show. Well, nice to be here. Nice to have you with us. What is this underground racial music? See, I'm 48. Maybe I'm not supposed to know about this. What's happening, Boyd? Well, I, I first I started out being just a member of the, uh, the un music underground. I did avant-garde music for years and years, then traveled around and gave concerts and met people all over who were doing, who had, you know, come to a similar place as me, who were doing similar things, but, you know, we didn't know each other, and we just sort of arrived at the same place somehow. Tom says and he saw your act uh, here in L.A. or someplace. This was about six, six years, six and a half years ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, what world. Uh, how, now, I get the impression that you've said something about you use soundtracks and various things. Uh, it sounds like very different than what we're used to. Yeah, yeah. I think most people who make music are making music for, for, the, mo for the mind, if you understand what I mean. I'm making music more for the brain. It's like the mind is sort of human, humanized and sort of has to do with society and the culture out there, but the culture that really doesn't have anything to do with what, what I am or what you are. Is it more for like just an emotional uh, need, or is it? Uh, it's. I think it's something you listen to, and it gets your mind to to start thinking in a different way. Um, start because it, it causes you to experience things that ordinarily I don't think you'd experience. This is not necessarily connected to like uh, drug cults or anything like that, right? Dr drug cults? No. <laughs> Just the well, you, you're talking about like trance music. In other words, you're trying to get people on their own natural high. Yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, do you, would you say that type of music is uplifting? Yeah. I, I find it very much so. But, but for some people, people who are resistant to it, they find it, you know, painful and horrible. And, you know, think I'm just trying to torture them with sound. Now, I understand you're quite well known in uh, Europe and, and England, maybe better than here. I, there's a lot of Americans seem to end up with that type of a, mm. a handle. Now, I hear you've uh, cut records for Yeah, Britain. I've been for, for years. And you own a, had a record company in Britain? And, um, I don't own it. Um, I'm, I'm signed to a record company in England. I it's see. like this major independent label called Mute. So you're probably even more well-known over there than you are here. Yeah, well, don't you feel that Euro bit. Europeans are more receptive to uh, different types of music? It seems like a lot of Americans are in a rut with Top 40 or um, the same rock and roll that they heard 10 years ago. It's like they just can't seem to break out of that and listen to anything new. I, I know. think Europe, uh, Europeans do seem, the time I spent in Europe, they seem far more receptive than uh, Americans do. Well, yeah. what's the evolution <coughs> of this uh, underground music into the more, uh, say, white racially oriented? music how how did this evolve you probably would be someone who could really clear that up well i think it came out of sort of chaos of like i was basically i was on the fringes of uh, the punk rock scene though i never considered myself part of it and that sort of came about just naturally as all these people were dissatisfied with what was going on and they they realized all the values they bought into were just garbage and didn't have any serve any function in their life and they just wanted to throw all that off and in the process of throwing it off, you know, most of them just just thought of, of freedom, sort of unfettered individualism. And then they'd get to a certain point and they'd realize they're going through all these motions, but uh, they really weren't being any more free. And so from that point of like throwing off all the values, I think it, you have to come back to something, something organic. Some type of discipline? Yeah, some type of discipline or, or you know, you get back to, to this biological knowledge of what you are and what nature is and where your place is and that and so forth. You know a lot of these uh, racialist type singers and bands in, in Europe and, and, and Britain. Could you mention a few? That, well, I know that you There's you know the skinheads mm -hmm. and you've the, mentioned some others. Yeah, there's, um, there's a guy I know named David Tibet who has a band called Current 93 who's moving more and more towards racialist stuff. 
and uh, he's friends with some people called Death and June, who are very racialist oriented. And um, we were, they're, they're actually, they're, Death and June is quite popular now. And there's another electronic band called uh, Above the Ruins, which uh, there's a guy in it who uh, is in sc Screwdriver. It, uh, that's a, a British skinhead band. Now, is that group more like National Socialist oriented or, or, or fascist or what? Which group? Well, the last group, Above the... Death in June? Oh, no, above, the the ruins. Ruins. above the Ruins. I haven't really heard Above the Ruins yet. I've just heard of them. But I know it's, there's one guy from Death in June and one guy from Screwdriver, so I assume it's... Well, it's I'd have to interject that, that electronic music is very white, just by its, by its very nature. Um, mm -hmm. I think you see too many non-whites listening to that kind of stuff. I, it just seems intrinsically white to me. It, well, our producer here has been into uh, sure. electronic music for a long time, Dave, Dave Wiley. And uh, I don't think it uh, plays on the same wavelength as a lot of the that's, that's minorities. Uh, that's my opinion, but I'm surely not a, uh, an expert on this. Yeah, yeah, that's what I feel, too. <coughs> in fact, people in the press, this, this music I do, um, the, the press dubbed it industrial music after this one band that uh, called themselves you know, said what they were doing was industrial music. And it had been said that this was the first white music, you know, to come out in hundreds and hundreds of years because a lot of the popular music has been influenced, you know, black influences. Well, you know, and, and th this... Little Richard and so on. Exactly. Well, this yeah. is something that's downplayed. It seems like the, the media likes to characterize us all as being one people and one mass, but it seems like a lot of rock concerts are the most segregated thing since a Klan rally. Uh, I would, I would think so. Now, I haven't been to many, but I'm waiting to be invited. Yeah. 